Hello and welcome to today's talk. It's uh, Sunday evening, the 9th of October. Now, um, the Governor of Florida and the Surgeon General of Florida have released a communication. And it says this. Now, I've got to be very careful about what I say here because I'm not going to breach guidelines and I'll be showing you that in a minute. But it says that there's an 84% increase in the relative incidence of cardiac-related death in 18 to 39-year-olds in the 28 days following uh, COVID uh, mRNA vaccines. So as a result, the Surgeon General is recommending against mRNA COVID vaccines in 18 to 39-year-old males that are already recommended against the use of vaccines in uh, healthy mRNA vaccines in healthy 5 to 17 year olds and in children under the age of 5. So what this means in Florida that uh, no male uh, under the age of 40 is advised to have a COVID uh, mRNA vaccine. Now this is from here. So this is from the official website. Um, The mission there is to protect uh, provide, promote and improve the health of all people in Florida, of course. Excellent. And uh, this is from the Governor and the State Surgeon General in Florida. So it carries their authority. And just to be doubly sure, here's the paper that we're... That's the paper on paediatrics. That's the paper on the general guidelines. So this is all uh, there and present. Now, There are things in here that, to be quite honest, we've suspected for some time, but I'm governed by this YouTube guideline here. Um, Claims about COVID-19 vaccines that contradict expert consensus from uh, local health authorities or the WHO. So what I'm doing now is quoting from a local health authority. Now, um, We're saying nothing about the efficacy of vaccines and we're not saying anything about vaccine safety um, that contradicts the guidelines, uh, vaccine safety, content alleging that vaccines cause chronic side effects outside the rare side effects that are recognised by health authorities. Well, cardiac related are rare side effects represented by, recognised by health authorities. We're saying nothing of the efficacy of vaccines and we're saying nothing of the ingredients of vaccines. So... um, Let's look in some detail now at what the uh, the state of Florida is saying about this matter. And this has got implications for all males in Florida under the age of uh, 40. Of course, these guidelines say nothing about males outside the state of Florida. But I'll leave you to think about that for yourselves. So there we go, released on the 7th of October. Right, Florida continues to emphasise that healthcare providers review all data to evaluate the risks and benefits unique to each patient when determining any healthcare service to uh, provide. Now, this is the way I have been trained. Um, we should uh, evaluate each patient independently. So we assess each patient, we evaluate their needs, we implement their needs, uh, and, and then we evaluate the efficacy of, of those needs. Individualised healthcare is at the very fundamental, it's the most fundamental thing of everything I've been taught and I've taught my students over the past uh, four decades. So I'm glad to see that Florida is completely consistent with that. This includes the administration of uh, COVID-19 vaccines containing messenger RNA, which both the Pfizer and Moderna utilise, of course. So this is talking specifically about mRNA vaccines. Uh, The Florida Department of Health... Uh, conducted an an analysis through self-controlled case series. Now, this is a recognised research method. This is from the British Medical Journal, which talks about the nature of this method. I'm not going to go into it in detail now because it would take too long, but there's a note about it, the full thing about it there. Technique originally developed, ironically, or interestingly, to develop uh, a a technique developed to evaluate vaccine safety. Now, this study, this is back to the Florida report, uh, studied mortality risk following mRNA COVID-19 vaccine. The analysis found, and I'm using direct quotes here because I'm scared stiff or say anything wrong, so they're all direct quotes. Uh, This analysis found there's an 84% increase in the relative 
incidence of cardiac related death among males 18 to 39 year old within a 28 day period following the vaccinations is what they found. Uh, individuals with pre-existing cardiac conditions such as myocarditis and pericarditis should take particular caution when considering vaccination and discuss with their healthcare provider. Again, presumably to get individualised care. So a uh, 84% increase in relative risk. Relative risk. Uh, the Florida Department of Health has issued the following guidelines based on currently available data. And of course, we always, we always, to my way of thinking, have to go by the best currently available data. And we always need to filter that through the lens of humility. Because I, I've often taught something called the audacity to intervene, that if you're intervening in someone's life, you better have a pretty flipping good rationale for doing that. Because for me to come along and say to you, I know best, is a pretty audacious thing to do, unless I've got the evidence. So we have to go with current evidence. Uh, Florida uh, paper, this is all from this paper here. Um, do check it out for yourself. Completely intelligible. I must say the Florida guidelines are uh, infinitely more uh, intelligible than, uh, shall we say, the uh, CDC guidelines, which can be a bit uh, difficult uh, to read on occasions. Of maybe that's just my... English uh, inability to understand their terminology but of course uh, Floridians are from the states as well of course and they perfectly uh, they seem to communicate perfectly clearly. Patients should be informed of the possible cardiac complications that can arise after receiving COVID vaccines. Of course patients must be fully informed of the risk and the benefits. With a high level of global immunity to COVID-19 the benefit of vaccination is likely outweighed by this abnormally high risk of cardiac related death among men in this age. Direct quote. So I am completely going by these uh, guidelines here from Florida. I'm quoting local health uh, advice here. State Surgeon General in Florida now recommends against the COVID-19 mRNA vaccines for males aged 18 to 39 year olds couldn't be clearer, direct, quote, applying to males aged 18 to 39 in the state of Florida. Of course, we're not saying this applies to males anywhere else. These are local guidelines for Florida. We look forward to uh, ev evidence-based updated guidelines from other areas of course as we always do males over the age of 60 had a 10 percent increased risk of cardiac related death within 28 days of mrna vaccines so relative increase is less in older men but still 10 percent relative increase none mrna vaccines were not found to have increased risk amongst any population. There is no doubt in my mind that mass vaccination in this world has saved millions of lives. This is specific advice from Florida, specific to mRNA vaccines. This is not in any way an anti-vax message. It is specific information from the Florida authorities. Floridians are encouraged to discuss the potential benefits and risks of vaccination of receiving mRNA COVID vaccines with their healthcare provider. Of course, it's a risk benefit analysis. We couldn't agree more. The risk associated with, associated with mRNA vaccines should be weighed against the risk associated with COVID-19 infection. I mean, this is just so obvious, isn't it? Yet they say it. I am delighted to say they say it. Uh, the department continues to stand by its paediatric vaccine guidelines there, issued on the 22nd of March, which recommends the use uh, uh, against the vaccines in healthy children uh, and adolescents aged 5 to 17, recommends against the use of COVID vaccines amongst children under 5 years old in the state of uh, Florida. So there we go. I think I've abided by the um, local health authorities' 
guidelines there pointing out that this applies uh, this advice applies to uh, Floridians. There we go. <clears throat> Interesting. Now, we like to um, give um, varied experiences on this channel. So Chris has actually, if you've got those of us with very good memories might remember Chris. So we're going to get an experience from Chris Nowry in California. Um, I think he's from San Francisco, but he'll remind us as we go through. So Chris, thank you very much and we look forward to your report. Now give cut Chris a bit of slack here. He's got a bit of brain fog for reasons he will uh, he will explain. Hi, Dr. Campbell. Uh, this is Chris Vendetto again um, <clears throat> from Los Angeles. I was, uh, it's been a while. So I thought I'd drop you a line and give you some uh, some updates here from uh, from America. Um, you do a pretty good job of it on the channel, anyway. But uh, a couple weird things I'm just noticing, and plus my own experience. So um, first thing is just want to get this right because I'm a little a little foggy. Um, <clears throat> on uh, September 26th, my son, who has who's 11. Uh, went back to school uh, in September, actually in August, and uh, at the end of September, even though having had all of his vaccines and boosters, uh, acquired COVID on the 26th. Uh, that Monday, we quickly isolated him. I started wearing a mask, and I was pretty much his primary caretaker that week. I took a lot of control over the environment, made sure that we weren't careless and we kept him as best we could. He didn't have any medication. Doctors just told us to keep him hydrated and Tylenol. Uh, he did pretty well with the virus. Not too many bad symptoms. Had like a fever for a couple days. Bounced back pretty quick. <clears throat> On, uh, I would say, Friday of that week, I started feeling kind of run down and uh, I had a sore throat on Friday morning, later that afternoon I had a bit of stuffy nose, and then Saturday into, uh, Friday into Saturday I had a horrible night. Um, couldn't breathe, sneezing, draining, coughing. Um, I had gotten tested on Friday thinking that I had COVID, uh, but my Saturday results came back from my PCR test and they were negative. Uh, I slept all day and then late Saturday night I uh, did a home test and it came back positive. So. Uh, first time getting COVID, two and a half years in to this pandemic. Uh, I thought I was going to, I thought somehow I was going to get past it, but I got it. Um, Saturday was a pretty rough day for me. Sunday was a relatively rough day, but I had them in telehealth with my doctor. They gave me steroids and uh, some nasal sprays. <coughs> By Sunday night into Monday, I started getting some really bad coughing, almost to the point that I had pains terrible pains in my chest and I couldn't breathe so I called my doctor back again and they gave me um, they told me to go to the ER to get a chest x-ray which I ended up going to an urgent care and they checked my lungs and it turns out that I was clear but they didn't like that I had all this pressure so they gave me Paxlovid um, I wasn't eligible for Paxlovid apparently here in the States because I was young and they just didn't think I would need it, but uh, since I was going downhill, they also took me off the steroid, saying that steroids lower your immune system. So <clears throat> I took the, I got off the steroids, started taking the Paxlovid, and today is Thursday the sixth, uh, and I feel like a hundred times better. Um, I no more pain or pressure on my chest, and I can breathe pretty well. As you can see, I'm still a little under the weather though. Um, still testing positive. Um, but the thing that I thought was weird is I'm a very big proponent on on the um, on the uh, sorry the one thing I will say about COVID it gets you very foggy uh, about the uh, the boosters and the immunizations I'm a big proponent for it and funny enough that Monday that my son tested positive was my two week uh, was two weeks from the bivalent booster that I had gotten my first jab was the Janssen then I got a uh, Moderna booster jab then I got another Moderna um, bivalent booster so <clears throat> I've had all my shots but I still managed to get it and 
I kind of feel like if I didn't have that Paxlovid, um, <coughs> I would have been uh, in pretty bad shape. I do have weaker lungs. I don't have lung issues, so to speak, but I always get sick here. <coughs> so I just thought it was very interesting how uh, it re uh, they originally weren't going to give that to me, um, and, and I'm glad that they did. I'm starting to come back. Again, I'm just feeling right now lots of pressure um, and a little bit of clogginess. Uh, but my fever never got very high. I was only about 100, maybe 100.1 the whole time. Uh, and that's it. Sore throat for that moment. But uh, my COVID experience has been weird, but I guess I'm happy to have had it now and to get through it. So I have the, the complex immunity to it. And um, the one thing I was going to say that, that was a little weird is, like you said on your channel, we're noticing a little bit of an uptick here in L.A., um, I have a graphic that I think I could put on the screen, and that graphic shows the last, you know, week or so. Um, and uh, as you can see, I mean, it, it kind of goes up and down, but, you know, today on Thursday, we're almost at 2,000 cases, 12 deaths, so, and our, our daily positive rate's going up a little bit. So um, I'm wondering what's happening, um, and I'm hoping that my level of immunity stays up. I'm grateful that my son is doing well and that I'm okay. Now we just have to hope that my fiance doesn't get it. And so far, so good. You know. So anyway, that was just a quick update. Uh, I hope you're doing well. And thanks for everything you do on the channel. Talk soon. Thanks for that, Chris. Uh, still, still, uh, obviously a bit foggy there, but I'm, I'm delighted that you are feeling better and disappointed that uh, you didn't get uh, high levels of protection from uh, the vaccines. But anyway, the main thing is you're feeling better now, which is great. And uh, thank you for sharing the, the information about your family as well. So always good to get people's experiences. Um, incredible, really. Um, two and a half years and um, he's... Uh, finally uh become symptomatic with with covid so thanks for that chris appreciate it and, and the update on on the uh, los angeles area as well and uh thank you for watching this video